Distracted driving affected my wife and I. We lost our son's life when he was 23. You just don't run into a bridge rail. So whatever he was doing, distracted driving took his life. I, uh, I had a regular run at that time from Denver to Omaha, and so I was able to go through brush on a regular basis and uh, call him up one afternoon and said, hey, how about supper tomorrow night? So uh, he said, good. And so he got his slow cooker out, put some meat, potatoes, and carrots in there, and uh, was prepared for uh, me to stop by and have dinner with him. And so when I got to town, I called him and he was living in a trailer house south of Brush, about four miles with his cousin. And so we, uh, we went down to his house and we had a, a wonderful meal that night. I was in Denver that afternoon and so was he. We didn't know each other was in Denver that day. And I pulled out of Denver and went up to a little town of Keensburg, Colorado. I was gonna take a nap there. And I laid down in this <clears throat> place where I'd parked and I couldn't get to sleep. So I thought, well, I'll just go up the road a little farther. And so I went up to where the scale was at at Fort Morgan, and they have a wide spot after you go through the scale. I thought, well, maybe I can sleep up here. So I went up to that scale and I took a nap and woke up and left Fort Morgan scale and drove up to Big Springs, Nebraska, where my hours had run out of my logbook. So I'd take my break in Big Springs that night. I don't know, it was probably 10, 30, 11 o'clock that night. I heard the loudspeaker holler for my name to come to the front desk. And uh, I thought, well, that's funny. Why would, why would they be looking for me? So I went up to the front desk and told him who I was and says, well, you need to call your dispatcher. Oh, okay. And so I called and uh, he, uh, told me what had happened. Our son was in Colorado and uh, was driving home from Denver up to Brush. And for whatever reason, um, he lost sight of the road, went to sleep, don't know, we'll never know, there was no witnesses. But he ran into a, a, a bridge railing and hit it head on at highway speed. It, tumbled the car a tremendous amount of feet and threw him out of the window. He didn't have his seat belt on. So that was uh, a horrific night. And uh, obviously after I got done talking to him, I called my wife and, and uh, you can only imagine how, uh, how that call went. Had I taken that nap in Keensburg, I would have come across that accident. So uh, I'm thankful for that. And uh, <laughs> like I said, it changes your life. So my career at Warner Enterprises has lasted over 42 years as a driver. And I've been blessed with a lot of good fortune from up above. Some of it's my skill. I always said I got a lot of miles. The good Lord's got a hundred of those miles. I've accumulated five and a half million miles of safe driving in my life, and I'm very thankful for that. When I say the good Lord's had a hundred of those miles, those are in hundred yard increments. Driving took my son's life, uh, almost took another one of my son's life. So um, I feel that I'm probably dedicated to this job uh, to promote safety, you can best promote safety by being safe. And if I can show my talents and my ability to be safe and have patience on the road, I think I'm promoting safety that way. It's, it's my own little way. I mean, how else can I do it? I can't hang a banner out the side of my window. I'm safe. I have to show it. Life is so much more important 